Coming up tonight, a tragic incident at sea in the boating capital of the Bahamas, now raising concerns about boating safety across the country. Plus, the chairman of the BCB responds to a recent protest by employees. He says it was surprising. And later, our news shares the stories of survival. One breast cancer survivor tells us how she found joy in her journey. These stories and more as our news weekend starts right now. This is our news weekend. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Megan Shepard. Police need the public's help in locating who is responsible for the stabbing death of a 52-year-old male resident of Rosebud Street on Saturday. Second officer in charge of the Criminal Investigations Department, Superintendent Tariko Sweeting, giving the media this update from outside the victim's home, where he was found slumped over dead. Uh, the victim is a middle-aged man. He's a resident in this community. However, he does not reside here where, where we found his body. Um, he appeared to have received some injuries to, to the chest area, um, consistent with, with a stabbing. Information is, is very, very limited at this time. And so we invite all the um, persons in this community to come in and give us some information. Douglas Grant is a 16-year resident of the community, familiar with the victim. He describes him as a mason by trade who did odd jobs in the community. He calls him an overall peaceful person. He don't really trouble no one. He drinks, you know, he drinks and he likes to sing. You know, he sing and he talks a lot. I just saw the guy this morning, right? We spoke, he went that way. I left and I went my way, did what I had to do. I came back. And um, I saw a lady, and she was like, hey, you live here? I say, yeah, I, I do. I said, why? What's going on? You know, she said, man, this guy look like he ain't, you know, responding, you know, come see if you know who this is. Lo and behold, it was him. You know, so it was shocking to me. Friday night's boating accident in Abaco, which left one man dead and several others in hospital, now raising questions surrounding overall boating safety and procedures throughout our archipelago. Pastor Silbert Mills was one of the first to the scene. He hopes the incident sparks a conversation regarding boating rules and regulations. I think this should start the conversation. Look, if you're going to travel by boat at night, it should have all of the most recent navigational aids available where you have a moving map in addition to your compass and you have a, a map that you overlay a GPS to guide you into where you need to go. These, these uh, new navigational aids have every rock and every key uh, on them to help you avoid having to run into these things at, at night, even in weather. Pastor Mills is also a licensed airplane pilot. He believes boat captains and operators should also be required to keep up to date with training, licensing, and proper safety apparatus. It's a given. When you jump on an airplane, they tell you the life vest is stowed under your seat. Any boat traveling day or night should have a life vest for every soul on board. Uh, I don't know what the, ram what the circumstances are with this one. Maybe that's a matter that the police should be asking questions about. But, uh, you know, if you're traveling by night, uh, you, you shouldn't. I, I don't want to wait until an accident happened. I want my life vest on when we take off from the boat dock and I'll give it back to you when I arrive my destination. Prime Minister Philip Davis issuing a statement on the passing of businesswoman and style expert Mitzi Turnquest on Saturday. The Prime Minister describing Turnquest as a shining light in our community and the epitome of the spirit of resilience, empowerment and transformation. He says, quote, her undying passion for leadership, good governance and women's and children's advancement was evident in every endeavor she undertook. Beyond her illustrious career achievements, what stood out was a personal journey, one marked by challenges that would have broken many. From homelessness to personal tragedies, she faced them all and emerged even more resolute, becoming a testament to the strength and willpower of the Bahamian spirit. 
end quote. The Hour News family also extends our condolences to the Turnquest family on the passing of Mitzi Turnquest. Well, the chairman of the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas responding to demonstrations by workers there over pay issues and rodent infestation. Our Joshua Williams is following the story. Solidarity Zedness workers and members of the Bahamas Communications and Public Officers Union protesting outside the corporation's headquarters Friday over late salary payments, overtime and rodent infestation. Union President Sherry Burroughs spoke on behalf of the workers. This isn't something that just started and we're out here. We don't, we, we, we don't take that approach. We've been trying to work with management to make sure that this uh, problem is addressed. So what has been their response? None. 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 No response. No Every response. single time it's always reactive. Yes. No proaction. It's always reactive. These people have children. In some cases, they have grandchildren. They have families that depend on them. Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas Chairman Paisel Forbes responding to the demonstration, calling it surprising. He claims he's not aware of any breakdown in communication between the union and general manager. As far as I know, we have a pretty good line of communication with the BCP or your president and also the BCM, your president. And I reached out to the general manager's office, they didn't have any um, communication that the union executives were trying to reach them. I didn't get any call from the both any ED union. And so therefore, I was somewhat surprised when I got the call today that the union members are at the gate. General Manager Clint Watson was out of the country at the time of the protests. In responding to the accusations, Forbes went on the defense, claiming the corporation has done its part in meeting employees' needs. Although we are a financially strapped corporation, we were able to give double increments to both unions in our industrial agreement just a few months ago. And to check with my accounts department and to hear that the only month that is outstanding for back pay is August, I'm saddened by these developments. We also con confirmed recently almost every staff member that would have been on a contract for years gone by, for years and a number of years, pardon me. So I think the corporation's leadership has really bent over backwards. Forbes says despite the concerns, the corporation will move ahead. At the end of the day, we are the national broadcast. We have a duty to perform. And the Bahamian people expect ZNS to deliver for them. But I want everybody to know that we share in the spirit of one love. One love. And we're going to be just okay. Reporting for our news, I'm Joshua Williams. Thanks so much, Josh. Well, it was a beautiful Sunday today, but as to what you can expect for the week ahead, well, meteorologist Ian McKenzie is standing by in the Weather Center with your first look at temperatures. Thanks, Megan, and good evening, Bahamas. Currently outside our studios, we're under mostly clear skies with a temperature of 84. Our winds are from the southwest at 5 miles per hour, but it feels like temperature of 93. Current temperatures across the country at this time, 81 in Freeport, 82 in Marsh Harbor, also Allistown, Bimini, 84 in Nicholstown and Nassau, 85 in Great Harbor, Keita Berries, and 82 in Governors Harbor, Eleuthera. For the Central Bahamas, 85 in Kemp's Bay, 84 in Georgetown and Edmonds Key, Long Island, and a pair of 82s in Arthurstown and Coburn Towns in Salvador. For the Southeast Bahamas, you have 85 in Duncan Town, Ragged Island, also Abraham's Bay, a pair of 84s in Colonel Hill and Delectable Bay, Auckland, and 85 in Matthew Town in Nagua. Taking a look at our satellite and radar imagery at this time, we have a funnel boundary across the extreme northwest Bahamas, and this will continue to trigger pockets of unsettled weather across that area throughout the course of the night and into tomorrow. Stick around, extended forecast, and your tropical weather outlook is still to come. And still to come on our news weekend, after a recent diagnosis of her own, a local educator wants to take the message of mental health to the airwaves. Plus, the Rotary Club of Grand Bahama making a special donation to a group of students during Literacy Week. We'll tell you all about it when our news weekend returns. Doctors Hospital is reimagined primary care. We have invested to improve our health system, ensuring that accessible, affordable, world-class clinical care is closer to you. Your relationship with a primary care provider shapes the foundation of your overall health. Our new, modern primary care facilities are where critical diagnosis and true personalized treatment begin. With locations across New Providence, Grand Bahama, and Exuma, we invite you to experience the Doctors Hospital difference. Book your next appointment at clinics.doctorshoss.com. 
favorite Bahamian artist of all time. I'll give you some time to think about it. The greatest Bahamian song was recorded by the beginning of the end, Funky Nassau. We're in a day and age where things can be different and still be authentically Bahamian because it's the Bahamian people bringing it to you. <laughs> Junkin was like the heart and soul of the Bahamian culture. Conversations and efforts to raise more awareness surrounding mental health continue in an effort to dispel stigma and provide much needed support. Educator Jasmine Collins says she's launching a new podcast called Expressions. She says the podcast will be geared toward children and young people, but the information can be vital to anyone dealing with mental health issues. Describing what it is, um, how to dissect the different diagnoses, and also where to get support. And whether that be financial or medical, it's very difficult to um, source those things here locally. So we want to create a space where everyone can come and just share what they've been through, what they want for their future, and a network of uh, professionals who can show them, share with them, hey, you can come for counseling sessions, you can go online, you can. Um, do some therapy, you can do some art, some dance, some writing, just anything to help express what, what's happening. Colin says her family has a history of mental health issues that were passed down. She was recently diagnosed with bipolar disorder. She's been treating the disorder holistically and wants to share her experiences with others. This is definitely challenging um, to say the least, to accept it, to talk about it, to embrace it, but I'm more on the, on the end of embracing it and I want to share just any, any help for one person, two people. It makes all the difference when you hear somebody else is facing what you're facing and that you're not alone. She says she believes the Expressions podcast is of great need, particularly following the COVID pandemic. I know suicide rates have increased, especially in young black men. Uh, we don't always hear these stories, understandably so, for families to be protected um, and also just to protect the reputation of the Bahamas, which is understandable. Um, however, I think that a lot of people feel alone and financially strained, emotionally drained since the pandemic. And I think this conversation is a bit taboo and there's a lot of stigma surrounding any diagnosis here. We have a lot of people who are on the streets. It's not for lack of love or support. It's simply that they are angry with what they're facing. They lack medical support, financial support. And if you're interested in being a part of the podcast, Colin says all are welcome as it promises to be open, inviting and even fun. We're going to have activities based around dance, art, music, uh, theater and writing. So hopefully a few spoken artists will perform, share their journey, share some relative topics that are happening in teens and adults here today. Um, anyone is welcome to come. I'm locking in the date. We're going to have it at the Gallery Wine Bar near the port and all the details are soon to come. I'll make sure you have them as soon as I lock them down. While the Rotary Club of Grand Bahama Sunrise doing their part to give their time and a special donation to the students at the Walter Parker Primary School during Literacy Week. Several members of the organization read books to the first graders at the institution recently. I was invited about a week ago to speak at a meeting for Rotary GB Sunrise. At that time, I took the initiative and on behalf of the school, to ask for some much needed notebooks. And today, I am proud to say they are here bearing gifts. We are very grateful to the Rotary Club of Grand Bahama Sunrise for their contribution today and for their time that they are going to put into our children in grade one for their reading. That, that definitely will enhance or contribute to their literacy development. President of the Rotary Club of Sunrise is to Carlos Sweeting. This program, I feel, is well needed at this time. Um, with the grades average that they say are being at D, we at the Rotary Club of Grand Mama Sunrise feel that it's our duty to help as much as we can, to bring the grade average up, and to help our schools in Grand Mama as much as we can. 
On the other side of this break, we talk breast cancer awareness. Hear how one organization is working to make the fight easier for those battling the disease. Plus, a survivor shares her story one-on-one -on -one with our news. We'll tell you why she says support is key during the fight. Welcome back. October is recognized globally as Breast Cancer Awareness Month, the month-long campaign to raise awareness that early detection is the best protection is echoed throughout many different organizations, including ones right here at home, like the Sister Sister Breast Cancer Support Group. Two-year survivor Agnes Gray, who is also a member of Sister Sister, shares how the group supports survivors and those living with breast cancer. We know and we see the need of persons who are hit with cancer, especially those from the family islands. They come into New Providence to get medical treatments and sometimes they have nowhere to stay. They don't have the money. They, come, they can come into sister, sister, and they can get a port an expensive port that costs anywhere from 500 and up dollars. They get it free. Sister Sister is doing a great thing to support cancer patients. As the number of women who are diagnosed annually increases, the group continues to do their best to assist by providing free medical support to those battling breast cancer. To this end, Gray is encouraging persons to make financial donations, which she says will be used to provide the necessary supplies. We are now looking to embark on establishing a hospice and we're now in collaboration with Doctors Hospital to secure a few rooms from them at a building that they are renovating at the moment. And that takes money as well. So we're asking corporate Bahamas who are not on board with us, please come on board. We really, really need your help. Anyone else who can give a helping hand, please give a helping hand to Sister Sister Breast Cancer Organization. December 2022, that is the time stamp that forever changed the life of 34-year-old Garrett Bow. That is when she was diagnosed with stage 1 breast cancer. Bow recalls what it was like hearing those words surrounded by family at the time. In the moment, I was very calm. And I'm very grateful um, about that. I had my family there with me in the room and I found out. And it wasn't a moment of sadness. It was a moment of, okay, what, what's next? What do we do? How do we fight this? So I'm grateful for the support that I have around me in that moment where I wasn't overwhelmed with sadness, but more of ready for the journey ahead of me. Bo, who now exudes a sense of peace as she recalls her journey thus far, says it has been a roller coaster ride. She admits that there were some low points, particularly when undergoing chemo treatments. And as a professional chef, she says losing her sense of taste was a major challenge. In January, I had a bilateral mastectomy done, and that took a lot out of me. Um, and then I've went through the chemo process and like just the multiple doctors visits and you know feeling sick like the whole symptoms of chemo and just going through the process but um, overall I would say that I can't say that it's been an overall negative experience um, I'm extremely grateful for the family that I have around me um, there's been joy in this experience for me and I'm grateful to God in that experience because it has to be something else external within myself because I feel peace and I felt peace throughout the journey thus far. And as the world comes together to recognize Breast Cancer Awareness Month, Bo says she believes there still needs to be more sharing of information. People wear their pinks on Fridays and I think that's important as well, but I do think there should be more um, research involved in it. In the Bahamas, we have a very high rate of breast cancer, and it's just overall having the the materials needed 
um, if there's seminars, lectures, or just speaking engagements of survivors, doctors, um, once you get diagnosed, what does it look like? Because that was a journey for me. What's the next step? I don't know. And I think it's the fear of the unknown. And to those still in the fight. It's a mindset thing as well. I would say try to stay positive because breast cancer is not a death sentence. And when people hear it, it, it takes a moment to get there, if I'm being honest. But it's not a death sentence. You can still live. You can still work. Um, yes, this is something that's going on in your life. It's something that you are fighting, but it's not over. Just stay encouraged on the journey. Great advice, Garrett. And still to come, your extended look at weather. Plus, an international organization returning to the island for the second year in a row. Those details coming up when our news returns from our final break. Stick with us. Residents of the Montel Heights community receiving brand new clothing and footwear courtesy of the Circle of Brotherhood, a Florida-based community organization. The group of 80 black men returned to the inner city community for the second year as a service component of their annual cruise. Lead organizer Brother Leroy Jones says, while it is important to give back to those less fortunate, the organization also wants to foster more economic empowerment within black communities. By encouraging us to spend money with each other, it can help us build wealth within our neighborhoods and hopefully make the money circulate more times than what it usually circulates in our community. The organization prides itself on youth mentorship and focuses on social ills like gun violence, which is also prevalent here. With nearly 10% of the men having Bahamian roots, the group sees the islands as an extension of their home base. The Brotherhood's executive director, Brother Lyle Muhammad, says the men are also living their motto, black men solving their own community problems, and are committed to growing the bond with Montel Heights. Well, short term and long term. Short term, we want to see a lot of smiles today. We're here with over two to 300 pair of brand new shoes to make sure our children and some of the adults, they get some of that and they get to interact with us and they know. A lot of people when they come to Bahamas, they just do tours. They don't come and serve our community. But long term, we plan on adopting this community so that we can help it grow on a long term basis. We are at the end of another weekend, and as we head into the work week, will there be rain or sunshine? Ian is back in the Weather Center with your extended forecast. Ian. Thanks, Megan. Good evening again, Bahamas. Here's your look at your extended forecast and your tropical weather outlook. We begin in the tropics where we have a tropical wave that's being monitored by the National Hurricane Center. It has about a 70% chance for possible development over the next seven days. Elsewhere, no activity to monitor at this time. For your boating forecast in the northwest and central Bahamas, risk of rip currents, winds variable at 10 knots or less, seas running 1 to 3, but up to 5 feet offshore in those northeasterly swells. You can expect a low tide tonight at 10.54 p.m., high tide tomorrow morning at 4.59 a.m. For the southeast Bahamas, caution in those swells and rip currents, winds southerly 10 to 15 knots, seas 2 to 4, but up to 6 feet offshore in those northeasterly swells. Here's your look at your national forecast. And in your extended forecast, expect showers throughout the course pretty much most of the week as we have that funnel boundary that should be stationary then eventually transform into a warm front and then migrate northwards by midweek. Highs getting into the mid to upper 90s or rather low 90s which are low temperatures into the mid to upper 70s. That's a wrap on your evening forecast. Have a great night everyone. Thanks so much for that, Ian, and thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Megan Shepard. Have a safe and wonderful evening.